Hi, Bob Johnson again. Wanted to touch base with you in case you'd seen our other uh, video that we've done that was based upon glial cells with the pain practitioner, Linda Watkins, University of Colorado. I want to go back and touch base with some of the people when they're trying to understand how does electricity work with the body. Because when you look at Dr. Watkins' literature here, much of it has positives and negatives and so on and so forth. And a person coming from an electrical background would probably look at that in terms of positive and negative. And coming from a chemistry background, you're looking at it at different type of uh, chemical processes and cascading of chemical events that occur in our body. And what I wanted to do was this happens quite often. People, it's abstract trying to understand how our body works electrically. And I wanted to give you just a couple of little tips so that you can keep this in mind. First off is one, a couple of constant uses of electricity where we're not doing well. It's what they call non-union fractures. That's an example, one of the best examples of someone's riding a motorcycle, their legs are to the side of the motorcycle, crush injury, after they've crushed the bone splinter. Now, a lot of times an orthopedic surgeon, historically, they can't get them to reunionize or grow back together. So in those situations, if you can't get unionization to occur, they would amputate, which is obviously severe. You will not use those legs or those bones again. One of the things they've used for years is they simply put electricity. You can either put it inside the body, you can put it outside the body, you can put it in a cast. You're creating an electromagnetic field or you're actually using electricity with positive negative pulse. Why do they do it? Because it makes the bones start growing back together. That's the reason for doing it. You can also take that same application where people have bed sores, what we call decubitus ulcers. Now, with all things, you assume nutrition is correct. You know, you can't grow things if you don't have the nutritional basis upon which to do it. So we already conclude the nutrition is adequate. Now, once that happens with the bed sore, you can't get it, the bed sore to heal. What do they do? They take electricity, they put it on the sides of the wound, and then they turn the electricity on. What happens? That cavity, which a lot of times will be necrotic tissue and so on and so forth, what they really are doing is you start seeing it start turning beefy red, recapitalization, you see blood vessels, it restores itself. The wound heals. How is it done? By electricity. Now, when you look at bones, when you look at soft tissues, when you look at muscle, when you're basically all of this is not terribly complicated on what we call the growth or regeneration process. One of the things that happens in our own bodies, if we were to have an injury, one of the first things our body does is it goes from specialized cells, which are what has been destroyed by injury or, or some accident, it reverts back to a basic cell because the epitome of basic cells is at the moment of conception. You have egg sperm, you create a cell, and from that moment on, our body and animals and plants and so on and so forth, there's something in the biological process that it can then go forward and generate according to the specialized cells that are needed. That's one of the strengths. That is one of the things sometimes when you hear stem cell research, what they're trying to do is to get back to a basic cell that now has the ability to regenerate if you need bone, if you need scar tissue, if you need hair follicles, if you need special retinal cells. That's all back to the basics of starting off. And one of the ways they initiate that process is with electrical changes. When you look at a non-union fracture, when you look at a, a bed sore, what they generally do is they will go back, and just to give you an example, if you have two magnets, north end of a magnet, north end of a magnet, you try to put them together, you're not going to do it. They're going to repulse. If you change one to a positive, one to a negative, literally, this is what goes on with the decubitus ulcer and non-union fractures. Once you do change the polarity, they attract. Now, think of it this way. There's a great uh, book by Dr. Robert Becker, orthopedic surgeon, pioneered some of the non-union devices. It's called The Body Electric. If you ever get a chance to read it, certain parts of it are excellent. And he goes further to explain this. But what happens? You have a non-union fracture. You have the distal, the proximal bone. They're repulsing each other. You put your ex external stimulator on. You change the polarity. Then all of a sudden, it starts growing back together. You can see this happen. This is not hocus pocus. Now, when it 
pauses and quit scrolling. If you could go there and you can go there and measure proximal distal. Now you got a negative negative or a positive positive. You got a repulsion. Flip the electricity, change it, start scrolling back together. That's not unique to bones. That's not unique to decubitus ulcers. That's unique to the way cells reproduce and the way things grow. So that's the interesting thing that has kept me fascinated with electrotherapy for 30 some years is so much of it is going on. There's so many things we do not understand, but there seems to be a way to solve problems without full understanding. And I use those two examples for you. But when you're talking to people, like when we even get to the point I told you about the chemical side of glial cells, one would say, because some of these glial cells that are mentioned in here are actually in the spine. Somebody would say, wait a minute. Are you actually changing the polarity in the spine? The answer is probably not, because that's not where you, would, where you were using elect, uh, electricity. But always remember, the process of communication, the process of chemical action within our body, starts at a distal point, not all, but some, at a distal point. You can stimulate here, but what you're doing is creating an electrical response that causes a chemical cascade of events and it goes to where it's needed. That's the, the energy, that's the mystery, that's the fun of electrotherapy. Hope this gives you a little basic understanding of some of the primary components of using elect electrotherapy to help people, especially chronic pain patients, which is a big struggle for us right now. Thanks. Happy to answer any questions. You can always get in touch with us. Just call us on our 800 number. You can also send me an email or go to our website and that's www.medfax.com, and you can see that there at the bottom of the screen anyway. Mm -hmm.